Hey everybody, Travis Bowman here. We've got a brand new Nintendo Switch controller to take a look at today by a brand called Doyoki. I think that's the correct pronunciation for that. And this is called the Epic or Epoch. I'm pretty sure they meant it to be Epic though. This is a very, very customizable controller right off the bat. That's the one thing that I've noticed that has really separated it from the other controllers that I've looked at thus far. So this controller has some Hall Effect joysticks. It's pretty much impossible to make a new controller these days without having those Hall Effect joysticks to prevent your stick driftage. We've got an actual D-pad instead of those Nintendo Switch buttons. And we've also got some RGB lights going on on both of these controllers that can be kind of customizable. We've got three different levels of vibration as well as some customizable programmable buttons on the controller. So in holding the controller in handheld switch mode like this, the thing that I've noticed the most is this kind of radical angle that this controller is at. And I know that they're trying to do this to promote uh, comfort and having a lot of the controller to actually hang on to as far as, you know, the design of it and everything. And that's kind of cool. But uh, at first, I didn't really like this so much because it is kind of a radical angle here. You can kind of see it right there. And it's hard for me to show you behind the camera like this, but I feel like my hands are way far down and at this angle sometimes. Now to be honest, I don't really prefer this controller in the handheld mode as much as I do using it as an actual controller, so I'll show you that in a little bit as well. So you can see this controller has some pretty lights going around uh, this this little edge here, and that's a fairly common thing with third-party switch controllers these days. If we look closely, you can see these four teeny tiny baby buttons down there. Now they all have some very specific functions. The one on the bottom right, that's going to be your turbo button. To be honest, I have no interest in using the turbo function on pretty much any Nintendo Switch controller, um, but it's there if you want it. And we've got the mode button, that M right there, and we've also got these two on the top. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Now on the left, you've got the button that lets you change your color. And all of these are different. You got a lot of colors to choose from, actually. Now the button to the right of that up top here, this is your vibration. So that's zero vibration, 50%, and 100%. Um, it's nice that they have a physical button there, uh, an actual plastic button that you can press to adjust your vibration levels. And that goes the same for the, the other side of the controller here. And these are kind of mirrored meaning that uh, you know on this side here's mode and turbo on the other side it's mode and then turbo so it's an interesting uh, configuration that they chose to do that way now on the bottom here you've got a USB-C for either controller if you want to charge those separately or you can use the included uh, separator here in the center and you've got a place where you can actually charge both of them at the same time when you're in handheld mode. And I really, really enjoy that feature. That's a really nice feature to have. Now, one of the main things that I'm constantly kind of concerned about with these third-party controllers is how do they actually clip onto the Switch and do they feel all right when they do that? Um, I've tested out quite a few of these third-party controllers at this point, and uh, the, the main thing that I'm searching for is the wiggle once you're connected to the switch and you know this one is a little more wiggly than some of the others that I've tried um, I don't think it's gonna break off or anything but you can tell when you're playing that it is just a little wiggly uh, more so than I'd like but is it a deal breaker no just something worth noting okay so now we've got the controller off of the Nintendo switch and you can use them in handheld just like this like you could do with your joy cons However, you could also clip these on this center piece right here, and then you've got an actual controller. And you can see what I was talking about earlier. Look how wide of an angle that is. Uh, it is a very, very wide angle for a controller like this, and it just kind of, it kind of swoops over like this. And holding it, it's, it is more comfortable in handheld like this versus handheld connect to the switch over there. Um, but it's just something worth noting. It's, it's not my favorite, but you know, you might like this sort of thing if you've got smaller hands. I think it's just because my hands are pretty big and I feel like I'm, I'm down here with my fingers touching each other because of that really wide angle. But to each their own, you might actually like that sort of thing. So like I said before, this is a very customizable controller. 
and let's take a look at what's going on up top here. So we've got two triggers, your L and R and RZ and LZ, all that good stuff. But you've got this M button right here. That's probably a little difficult to see because it's just all black right here on camera. But there's an extra button up here. It's just a little click. It's not like a, a trigger or anything. The triggers feel just fine. Um, they're also kind of a clicky click. There's not too much a travel distance there, which some people might like. These are just buttons, these, these L and R buttons up here, and so are the M buttons, M1 and M2 there. And of course, on the back of the controller here, we have some R and L extra buttons, L4 and R4 there, which can be assigned to multiple different functions. And that's a really, really unique thing, I think, about this controller, is that you've got those extra buttons. You know, most people will just throw those on their controllers there down there but it's kind of interesting to have an extra set up here and I'll be honest they they kind of got in my way a little bit when I first pulled out the controller and started messing with it and you know I'm not necessarily one for a bunch of customization and extra buttons on my controller so admittedly this might not be the controller for somebody like me but if you are a super tinkerer and you like to mess with your controls a lot then this is probably a really good fit for you like I mentioned before these kind of got in my way as I was playing up here and I would touch them just ever so slightly and kind of be almost a little bit alarmed that they were there like I had to remind myself that yeah that's an extra button sort of feeling and uh, it took me a little bit to get used to but the triggers are, are actually pretty pretty nice I wouldn't even call them triggers though they're just buttons it's just a little click before you get there there's not a lot of travel distance at all now the other thing that we need to talk about are the sticks the sticks are fine um, they're, they're, they're nice sticks there's nothing really negative to say about them um, I like the texture the, the circular texture there it's a nice grip on your thumb but that's not what I'm here to talk about I'm here to talk about what they sent in the box over here these are interchangeable sticks which is uh, something that I don't think I've seen before for the Nintendo switch here but let me see if I can break this apart for you real quick on camera we're just gonna take this and whoop, Drop it on the floor, of course. Here's the other style of stick there. It's 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 more Switch-like, I think. It's just uh, got some texture on the outside. And putting them on can be a little tricky because the stick wants to move around. And eventually I'll get it, I think. I have to turn this at the right angle. There it is. There's the new stick. And you can see that this one is just a little bit taller than this one. Now, the one that I had on there just a moment ago is the exact same one as this, but this one's a little taller. So, uh, my thumb is way up here now as I'm playing this game in the background. I've got Splatoon 3 going back there. Um, and, you know, you might like that, you might not like that, but I think the, the cool thing is that they give you an option. So we've got two of these for each stick there. So here's the circular one that I just put on and here's the one that I dropped on the floor a second ago. Um, and they're different sizes. You can see this one's a little bit bigger than this one. So you can mix and match. You can take these off of, of whatever stick that you want. Now, in addition to these right here, we also have some almost GameCube-like nubs as well these little teeny tiny things so let me see if I can go ahead and put this on the right stick I've got two of these here so I'll put that one there I'm gonna take this off of the right stick that came off pretty easily now this is a teeny tiny little thing let's see if I can line this up properly there we go that was not too hard at all actually so you've got kind of almost like a GameCube style nub like the C stick on the GameCube controller but you can put this on the left stick too if you want. I mean, uh, I actually don't prefer this stick, I don't think, because it's just a little too tall to be comfortable in my opinion. Uh, so I'd, I'd like to put the original back on there. If I can, there it is. So there's almost kind of like a, 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 a weird combination of the C stick nub there and your Switch style control 
uh, stick on the left there. So that's kind of interesting, actually. Now, these actually fit pretty well on there. I've never had an, an, an instance where they pop off or anything like that. It's just kind of weird. I've never seen anybody do this before. You would think that it wouldn't be that great a quality, but it's actually not bad. So as we start up Splatoon 3 here so I can show you some of these extra functions, I'll go ahead and say that this configuration with both of these style sticks right there, that's probably my favorite configuration. It's nice to have the nub and it's nice to have the larger stick if you need it, but uh, I don't see myself ever using any other configuration of these sticks there, which is totally fine. So we're in Splatoon 3 here, and I just kind of wanted to show you what it's like to use some of these extra functions here. I actually found this out as I was playing the game that these extra M functions, like this M1 up here, and some of the ones on the back here are actually pre-mapped. So for example, in the game, if you press up, you can see down here, you'll say something like this way. And if you press down, it'll say Booyah. It's just one of those little mini chat function things in the game. So I'm pressing up and he's saying this way, and I'm pressing down, booyah. This is a pre-mapped thing, I didn't do this, but this button under here, this thing right there, if I press that, I get down for booyah, and if I press this little trigger up top here, I get this way, which is kind of, kind of interesting. Sometimes you have to jump to kind of get over some platforms. Uh, the B button down here is that function, and curiously, the trigger under here does the same thing. So I guess that's kind of cool. I think it would probably be uh, more preferable to have that on the left side to jump if you wanted to. But I can see how something like this would actually be a pretty useful thing and actually be kind of cool. But as far as the controller is concerned and how it feels and everything, um, my biggest gripe about it is the angle in which it's at there. Um, but using the controller uh, the vibration is nice, and it's it's super easy to control. Uh, I would probably have it at around 50% if it was me. I don't know if you can hear that. I'll try to get a little closer to the microphone. But it's a very sharp vibration. So the buttons actually feel pretty fine. Um, there's, there's nothing too abnormal about them. Um, they're not really super loud or anything like that. It's just a really nice kind of sort of squishy button, but it's not mushy. Um, I, I have no issues with those. The D-pad, and that's something that everybody seems to worry about is the D-pad. This one is very, very stiff. It's a very stiff D-pad. Anything, in my opinion, is better than this. I really am not a big fan of the Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons in general, and Replacing a d-pad with these buttons over here is just not a good thing in my opinion Especially if you want to play some fighting games or even platforming games To go left and right using buttons is not what I'm into and I think this is a great alternative Even though the d-pad is a little stiff for my liking so in combination of changing your vibration to whatever level that you want And by the way, you can do that per controller for the left side and right side so if you want super vibration over here but nothing over there that's a thing you can do if you so desire and you know you can change the colors up a little bit you can change those on either side mix and match whatever color this that you want and that's kind of cool too so i've never actually mapped some custom controls on this controller before but I figured let's jump into something like Mario Tennis and we'll see if we can do that function in real time okay so we're in Mario Tennis here and the B button is kind of the blue slice shot there and the A button is the red topspin style shot and then Y is that purple kind of power shot so according to the manual here it says you can hold the M button and then press any of these extra buttons to map them so I'm gonna hold the I guess I'll hold the M button on the right side here and I want to map this bottom trigger button and then input the button or button combination you want to set I'll choose Y and when you're done press the button that you wanted to program so that's this down here so let's see so if I map this correctly this bottom trigger under here should be that purple power shot 
and it is. So, I mean, this is just an example. Uh, honestly, I don't think I want to change any controls in Mario Tennis specifically, but I just wanted to give you an example of something that you could change if you wanted to. Uh, that's actually kind of cool that you can do that using the controller without having to go into the menu and change any settings in game. So overall, I think this is a really neat controller. There are pros and cons to it. It might not be the controller for somebody like me, but at the same time, I can really see how useful this would be for a lot of people. Specifically, these triggers up top, these, these extra buttons, that, that you have up top next to the triggers for something like a first person shooter you know instead of having to press a button to reload or something like that like a face button like Y for example you could just map that so you don't have to take your fingers off the trigger or you could do like the left one the left button up there to jump or something like that or you can even do that on the bottom so there are a lot of really unique functions that this controller has and I think that's probably the 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 coolest selling point about the whole thing is that it's really uniquely customizable and that's with your extra sticks with your extra programmable buttons as well as the different color schemes that you might want to try out and having those three levels of vibration is nice as well and yeah the sticks are interchangeable and that's cool and everything but they're hall effect so that's also a really really nice bonus you don't have to ever worry about these things drifting I could see myself using this for first-person shooters and stuff like that and I I've tried it out with uh, Quake and Doom and, and stuff like that, and it's actually a pretty nice controller. Honestly, it's just not my favorite. I don't I don't like the the angle of the controller. I think it's just a little too extreme. I can see what they were going for, and it's really a nice touch for those that might like it. But I'm just not one of those people. I really do think that what they've got here is something really really cool and it's my understanding that this is kind of like a redesign of a controller that they had before so props to them for really taking some of that feedback and, and improving in a lot of different areas. So these guys actually reached out to me and asked me if I would do a review on their controller and I said of course I will as long as I can tell you my own opinions and they were all on board for that so I'm really appreciative of them sending this out to me. It's a really really nice controller as far as like the build quality. I don't think it feels like cheap plastic or anything like that. It's very robust. You've got some texture on the grips here and uh, the face of the controller is nice and smooth. Uh, they did a good job on this. They really did. And it's just the angle of the grips. That's my number one gripe. I'm, I'm just not a big fan of having my, con my hands sort of melt downwards into the controller. That's the one thing about it that I'm not crazy about. But other than that, I think they did a really great job with this controller. And you might find it something that you really, really love. Now, it's nice that they included the extra sticks. And this is the insert inside of the box. And this is where you can kind of put these sticks when you're not using them. And that's all nice and good and everything, but I would prefer maybe like a small bag, like a little little teeny tiny bag that, that's got a drawstring that you could you know close and everything. I think that would be a much better touch than having these just kind of hanging out in the plastic because I can see a lot of people losing these things. But for me, I'm just gonna leave them in there and probably put them back in the box because like I said, this configuration is my favorite and I don't see the need to change it to anything else but it is a nice touch that they add added those in there so if you're looking for a super customizable controller for your Nintendo switch you might give this controller a try this is the epic game controller here big thanks to Doyoki I think that's how you pronounce the name I'm so sorry I'm so sorry if I'm butchering that I mean d-o-y-o-k-y Doyoki Doyoki Thank you for sending me this controller. I really appreciate it. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Have you guys had your hands on this controller before? You know, there's some other ones out there that are comparable to this. And I'm wondering what you guys think. What are the pros and cons for this controller versus maybe another one that you might have your eyes on? Well, if you decide that you want to pick this one up, you can check the link in the description. Thanks so much for checking out this video. I hope it was informative. You know, I've got a bunch of other controller reviews as well as a bunch of other retro video game stuff on my channel. And I play a lot of video game music too. So if you want to check that out, feel free to do so. There's a playlist in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys at the next one. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.